Hey YouTube, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name's Roman and listen, it's so much stuff going on. It's so much stuff for us to chat about. But before I begin, please, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you'll get notified anytime I drop an upload. All right, let's jump right into it. So let's talk about the Grammys, the nominations and the snubs. So the Grammy, the 2020 Grammy, the 2021 Grammy nominate Grammy award ceremony will be held on January 31st, 2021, hosted by none other than Trevor Noah. And he's so funny to me. He's like, um, he has like dry humor and I think it's just so cute and so funny. So it'll be hosted by him and that's when we'll be able to see who actually won. So let's get into the nomination. Um, of course, Queen B leads the pack with nine nominations for Black Parade and Black is King. She's received nominations in categories such as Best R&B Performance, Best Music Film, Record of the Year, Song of the Year, Best R&B Song. Um, and we'll talk a bit later why I think that's happening the way it's happening, but kudos and shout out to Beyonce. You are getting your flowers, young lady. Um, next up, Megan Thee Stallion. She um, has received four nominations for her Savage remix song, um, most notably Record of the Year, Best New Artist, Rap Song, Best Rap Song, and Best Rap Performance. And this is also um, a tribute to uh, Beyonce's count. So that's why she also has nine um, noms and Meg has four noms. So that's quite a feat for Megan Thee Stallion. So I know she's going to win one of them. Um, I'm hoping she does win um, Best New Artist. Once I looked at the category of the who's all in the, the Best New Artist pool, I hope she wins Best New Artist. Um, Janae Aiko, she has three nominations for her Chilombo album. Um, she has got Album of the Year, which is a huge feat for Janae Aiko, someone who hasn't really received um, Grammy credit since like 2015. Um, and she's put out a lot of hits since then. Um, she's also received Best R&B Performance and Best R and Best Progressive R&B Album. Now let's talk about the Best Progressive R&B Album. The Best Progressive R&B Album, the title used to be called Best Urban Contemporary Album. And due to a lot of politics and a lot of changes over the years, they had to switch that word out because many people felt like it was actually um, demeaning and demoralizing their bodies of work um, by adding the word urban. It didn't seem like it was as credible as the other awards. And so I, I, I agree to like um, you don't see that on any of the other other titles. So. Moving right along, Best New Artist went to also Doja Cat um, and shockingly K Tandra. Now, this is so interesting to me because I went to go see K Tandra about two or three years ago. He would have um, a set at Made in America. Um, and he's been out since about like 2010, putting out hits after hits after hits. So it's so funny to me that now all of a sudden the Grammys has recognized him as Best New Artist. Bitch, where? Okay. Um, her has um, been nominated for Song of the Year, which is a feat for her as well. Um, now, the song that they chose, I Can't Breathe, out of all the songs that she has in her body of work, um, you know, I'm not adding, I'm not discrediting it. I'm glad she's received one, but I feel like um, all of this stuff is just like, it's coming, but it's coming at like odd times. Um, Pop Smoke, he won Best Rap Song for Dior. Um, Post, so this would be a posthumous award, a win for him. And I think he's going to win something um, at this ceremony. If not him, I think someone who's posthumous, who has um, like something on the, the award, the charts, I think they're going to win something um, just in this year and in the climate right now. I feel like this award ceremony is so political. It's so symbolic. It You know, it's a reflection of what's going on in the world, which is why I'll talk about the Beyonce all those nominations and the snubs later. Um, best rap song went to Big Sean, The Baby, and Lil Baby. Um, kudos and shout outs to them. Um, the um, I'm very I'm shocked that there wasn't um, other artists in this category. Though we've heard Lil Baby and The Baby on everyone's record, I assume that maybe like. Um, 
Lil Dirt, like someone from another younger rap artist with uh, some songs out would have been on there. Interesting Drake is on there, Future is on there, some of the similar people we've, we co we've come to know and be used to. Um, Let us see. She has received the nomination for Best Traditional R&B for um, her album. For her, I think it's for her album. Um, but I love Let Us See. Um, I've been rocking with her since about 2014. She had an album produced um, called The Truth. And it's a song in there called Can't Help Who You Love. Go check that out. Um, I love that song. Um, my girls, Chloe and Haley, they've received three um, nominations. One for R&B song for Do It and R&B traditional performance, as well as the best progressive R&B album. Um, in addition to them winning for best progress progressive R&B album, um, Giveon, John Legend, and Luke James have also um, entered that category as well. So this will be interesting. Um, best rap album went to Nas, most noticeably for me, went to Nas, J Electronica, and Royce the Five Nine. So there's a few people on that list I felt like was left off or may may have been snubbed. Um, Drake and Future, you know, they had to be entered for something. So they won, they were nominated for Best Rap Video for Life is Good. Um, Justin Bieber, he was nominated for Pop Vocal Album, but he wanted that album to be in the R&B category because he said he made it a body of work that was more reflective of R&B. Um, and my thing to him is like, just take what you can. We got people who are actually real R&B artists who have been doing this all their lives, who still can't even get on the R&B, get nominated for R&B. So just take what you can and move on. I don't even have time for him in that. Um, someone else who I saw was nominated for something, Tiffany Haddish, she was nominated for best comedy album for her Black Mitzvah. And I had never actually listened to it. Um, or nor knew she made a best comedy album. So shout out to her for putting in that work. Certainly, there's quite a few nominations that, you know, or snubs per se, um, that are so noticeable. Um, number one, Summer Walker for best new artist. Now, Summer Walker has been putting out, like I've said in a number of videos, she's been putting out really, really good music. And to me, she's bringing back like the 90s R&B vibe. And she's even admitted that that's some of her, um, some some of the, the inflection, like she goes to get some of her, um, uh, I, the word can't come to my mind, but she goes to get some inspiration from some of the 90s R&B, late 90s R&B, TLC, Aaliyah, those artists. So um, she didn't receive any kind of nomination. So that was interesting. To Tiana Taylor, her the album was dope. Um, it was very, very, she was able on this album, she was able to express all of her vocal cords in various different in different on different beats with different artists and so that's what made it a lot more appealing this this go around it's like she put more effort into this piece of work um and she should have been in the category for best r&b album but she took to her twitter and she expressed her frustration frustration and most notably she said that all all of the nominees in the best um, R&B album section are males. Um, so she was like, they should just might as well call it the male R&B album um, because she sees nothing but dicks. And I agree, you know, between her, Tanashi, um, Summer Walker, Janae Aiko, um, all of them should, you know, get their proper due, um, proper due and proper credit, especially in best R&B album because they've been consistently putting out um good bodies of work, especially Summer Walker. I was very shocked by that. Someone else, Ariana Grande, but we know why she wasn't. Um, she did receive a nomination for being featured on Lady Gaga's Rain On Me, um, but she didn't receive any nominations for anything that she put out because the album Positions was released actually in October and the Grammys only count musical entries between September 1st 2019 to August 31st, 2020. So it came after the date. So I guess we'll be seeing this on the Grammys for next year. Um, Brandy B7. Some people felt like it should have been nominated. I didn't feel like this was an album that 
was one of her albums that should have been nominated. I felt like it was a redemption album, meaning that she was just resurfacing herself, bringing herself back out. But I didn't feel like it was it was enough to give her like a Grammy nom. I don't know, but it was great music. I enjoy it a lot, but I don't feel like it was Grammy nom. nom. But there are some people who felt like she should have received um, at least best R&B album. And as we can see, Tiana Taylor said, it's nothing but men. So um, Lil Baby and the Baby, I felt like they should have been in the best rap album for um, both My Turn, which was released in February 28th, and Blame It On Baby, which was released in August, um, well within the time frame to be considered for this, um, for the nomination ceremony, but they weren't included. And so it's just so interesting to me that they didn't add those two artists. Um, and of course, the biggest one being The Weeknd. Um, now, you know, The Weeknd had Blinding Lights, which spent four weeks on top 100. His album spent, I think, almost close to four weeks on the top 200 billboard, billboard charts. And so he had already begun planning a collaborative performance with the Grammys. He had tweeted out that they were working collaboratively, collaboratively on a performance for the Grammys. And this was um, before he had even um, asked them to do the Super Bowl. So this was already planned. And then once he was tapped to do Super Bowl, he asked the Grammys, would it be okay if I can perform at the Grammys and the Super Bowl um, with there, there wouldn't be any conflicts of interest, in, of interest because the Grammys is going first, January 31st, and the Super Bowl will be sometime in February. So there wouldn't be really a conflict of interest. Um, and so they agreed. And then the noms were released and he wasn't anywhere to be found. And so his tweet, he tweeted, um, to basically say that the Grammys remain corrupt. You owe me, my fans, and the industry transparency. Collaboratively planning a performance for weeks to not being invited, in my opinion, zero nominations equal you're not invited. And so that was what he had tweeted out. And he had also received a lot of support from a lot of different other artists, um, such as Elton John, Scooter Braun, Akon, Charlie Puth, Kid Cootie, Tanashi, Boy Wonder, um, even Drake. Drake, um, he wrote in his stories on Instagram, I think we should stop allowing ourselves to be shocked every year by the disconnect between impactful music and these awards and just accept that what once was the highest form of recognition may no longer matter to the artist and exists now and the ones that come after. It's like a relative you keep expecting to fix up, but they just can't change their ways. And so that's what Drake Drake tweeted out in response to the Grammy snub for the weekend. And so after all of this, um, Recording Academy interim chief Harvey Mason, he told Variety that the omission wasn't intentional and who gets nominated really just comes down to the voting body that decides. We have eight nomination slots to fill in, five and others, and the voters vote for their favorites. It's really interesting though. And so is I feel like this was totally to, to sabotage The weekend. What I think happened was they were all a go for including The weekend and on, on the Grammys as a performer, as well as he was probably included in a lot of other categories as a nominee. Once they realized that he also had the opportunity to perform at the Super Bowl and people would, you got to remember, we're in a pandemic where people are focused on the business side of things. And so what's most important for these award shows is TV ratings and getting the viewers in and getting the most bang for their buck. Now, if The weekend was to perform at both the Grammys and the Super Bowl, he would essentially be able to... Um, play to those who miss the Grammys. They can come watch at the Super Bowl, as well as those who don't want to watch the Grammys. They can go and watch his performance at the Super Bowl, meaning if he was only to perform at the Grammys, there would be no other opportunity to catch him, meaning you must catch him then and there. And then any other post streams of his performance, they will still reap the benefits of that on YouTube, on any other thing they would have to, you know, if it's a, a rebroadcast, they would then still reap the benefits of that in viewership and in spend, ad spend. But if he has two performances, 
the minute he performs there, it loses its, its value, its immediate value, because he'll be coming again with another performance that, you know, to be honest, people will probably look more would more likely look forward to watching because it's not a bunch of artists. It's just that one artist at the halftime. We've come to know when the halftime is. You're already celebrating with friends and family, hopefully safely. Um, so for them, they saw it as a huge, significant loss. So I think to get back at him, what they did was boost Beyonce. Now, the reason I think they boosted Beyonce's nominations up was for two reasons. One was viewership. They're probably in negotiations right now to get Beyonce and her team to do a surprise performance at the Grammys. You have to remember, even announcing that Beyonce is a surprise performer at um, the Grammys would outshine um, The Weeknd then that would mean that The Weeknd's performance would then be come second to a Beyonce performance. So I think that they're doing that. And, you know, I don't think Beyonce would show up at this show unless she's guaranteed a specific amount of wins. Again, this is very political and it's all allegedly. It's what I've been reading and trying to piece together in my head. Number two, I feel like um, if they get Beyonce to perform at the Grammys, the, it adds value to their show in rebroadcasting and also in viewership thereafter. So if you ever pull segments from the show, it'll be um, it'll be tied to their viewership. Um, and then another bonus is this might be an opportunity for Beyonce to release a project. We know that when she does award shows, typically after the award show, there's an album, there's a video, there's a documentary, there's something. And so for her to want to come back on the scene, as she's been saying, she wants to release something. Um, she wants to be good for the soul. This might be an opportunity for her to release her music, her new whatever that might be. Um, in such a grandioso way. So we don't know, but I do feel like everything that's happened to the weekend in terms of the Grammys has been intentional. And I think that Beyonce getting so much for just two songs, Black is King and Black Parade, is indicative of them really, really wanting her to participate in the show um, and also really, really showing that they need the viewership and they need um the value in this sh broadcast so that they can reap the you know they can re not only re reap the benefits of the viewership but rebuild and rebrand their um their show now what i thought was interesting is that the i think back in 2018 there was this advisory group um formed in, at the grammys called the black music collective and it's ran and spearheaded by quincy jones and john legend and so they were asked about how they felt the nominations were was this year and if they felt like it lacked in um, being diverse. And so they said, no, they actually think that they've moved the needle far. They said that we have 10 black women in the top four categories. We have 20 black folks in general in all the fields, across all the fields. And then in the rap album category, there are six independent rap artists. It's something that we've always been talking about. You know, there's a lot of commercial artists who impact the Grammy nominations versus those indie artists who don't impact it, but they have just as much impact when it comes to radio play and performances and stuff like that. So they think they, they they're saying that they've moved the needle um, to a point, but they still they they have noticed that there's still much more work to be done, um, and so it's it you know it's interesting how on one side we're dealing with the diverse issue, but on the other side you have to deal with the political machine and the fact that it's a business, and so they have to be appealing on one one side, but equal and fair on the other side, and as a result, this is the kind of Grammys you'll get. You'll get folks who are going to be completely snubbed. And then you'll get categories that will be completely laced to be equal and fair, but miss out on a whole, let's say a whole genre of folks, you know, and I'm specifically talking about that best R&B album, album category where it's nothing. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on it. But um, what do you think? Do you feel like The Weeknd was snubbed intentionally? Do you feel like Beyonce should have received nine nominations for these two songs? 
do you think that the Black Music Collective, the advisory group within um, the Grammys, do you think that they're doing enough? Do you think that this year is reflective of how much they've done? Drop down in the comments and let me know. And also.